Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac and welcome to another vacuum cleaner demonstration. The model I'm testing for you today is a cheap bagless cleaner by a company called Goblin. Now as far as I know you can only buy the Goblin brand in Asda stores in the UK or online of course from Asda.com. This is a cheap machine, normally retails for around £45 but I got this on rollback for £25. Obviously the time you're watching the video could affect the availability and of course the price of this cleaner. So basically it's a very cheap budget priced single cyclone bagless cleaner. Well does buying cheap mean that you're not going to get very good performance? Hopefully by the end of this demo we'll find out. Before I take you on a tour of the cleaner itself I'd just like to show you the tools you get included with this machine. This is your main carpet and floor nozzle. As you can see it's got a large inlet, it's got a litter picker, this red strip here is designed to help pick up threads and fibres and more clinging litter such as pet hairs. You've also got a brush at the front and a squeegee at the back, that's for your hard floor cleaning. When you want to clean hard floors you flip the nozzle to the hard floor setting here and as you can see the brush has lowered at the front and the squeegee has lowered down at the back as well. For, for manoeuvrability you have two smaller wheels at the front and two larger ones at the back. All in all for a budget cleaner I was quite impressed with this nozzle, of course it's all plastic but it does seem fairly well made. The only other nozzle you get with this machine, which is a shame, but is this little crevice tool. It's very short and not very practical really, it doesn't really get into all the nooks and crannies. You might be able to clean some of your crannies but your nooks will remain untouched with this very short nozzle. Apart from a straight suction end you can flip this little brush out and use it for well dusting but it's not very effective for dusting. It's too small, it really is a tiny nozzle but um, it might help give you a little bit of agitation when you're cleaning around the edges but all in all it's a pretty poor nozzle but you'll find nozzles similar to this on budget vacuums. Another thing common with very budget vacuums is plastic extension tubes. Now if you go up slightly in the range you normally get a telescopic metal tube but these are plastic and they do tend to flex a bit during use so I'd be, be a bit wary of that. And finally you get the hose, quite short, it's about 1.5 metres. This end is for the machine, you've got two release levers at the either side that you need to press when you want to pull it out of the cleaner and you've got the handle end here, it swivels and you've got a suction control just there. Here's the cleaner itself, it's very lightweight and fairly compact and of course it's bagless because we've got the clear bin at the front. This is a single cyclone vacuum cleaner, it's not multi-cyclonic but I don't expect multi-cyclonic technology when you're at the budget end of the price point. To remove the bin we've got a big red switch here, just press that and then we can take the bin out for emptying. When you want to empty the bin there's another little catch at the bottom, just press that and the dirt should fall free. There is a filter located inside, to access the filter we just turn the top and you can pull the whole shroud and filter out, you can give this a clean, to give it a more thorough clean you can turn the shroud so it removes and then inside the shroud we have the pleated so-called HEPA filter. This will get dirty fairly quickly, you do need to keep this clean, it is washable, make sure you dry it for 24 hours before putting it back in the machine. You can also wash the shroud as well and that all fits back together fairly easily and then back into the cyclone bin and then back onto the cleaner. At the back of the machine you've got an exhaust filter which you can also wash, that's located behind this grey grill and it's basically just a foam filter, easy enough to clean, once you've rinsed it underwater give it a squeeze, again leave that to dry for 24 hours before putting it back in the cleaner and then closing the grill. This is the parking bracket you'll find on many vacuum cleaners and that enables you to put the main nozzle onto the cleaner like that so when you pause your vacuuming it means you're not having to drop the nozzle onto the floor and bend over to pick it up. You can just put it in the bracket and then just pull it out and resume your vacuuming. 
Automatic cord rewind is a pretty standard feature even on budget priced vacuum cleaners. It's got a 4.7 meter cord so it's not very long but it'd be okay for smaller to average sized rooms. When you finish cleaning you just press on this pedal with your foot or your hand to rewind the flex. Before I start my demonstrations I need to attach the hose. It's a simple push fit until it clicks and when you want to remove it simply squeeze the two levers either side and you can take the hose out. The first test I've set this Goblin bagless vacuum cleaner is pet hair removal. So in front of me I've put down two types of dog hair and I've rubbed it well into the carpet. I'm going to pass the nozzle front and back through all this mess and we'll see if it makes any impact. I'm not expecting great things from this machine because historically suction only cleaners don't tend to deal very well with clinging pet hair. You really need a pet version that has a turbo brush or even better a motorised power nozzle. So we'll give it a go anyway. So I'm just going to pass the nozzle backward and forward through the mess and we'll see what happens. As I predicted, looking at the bin, it has picked up a little bit of the pet hair, but quite a lot has managed to just stick on the nozzle. At least the litter picker is working, it does actually stick to it, but really it needs to be sucked into the suction path. What I'm going to do is use the machine as you'd normally use it. I'll go back and forwards a few times just to see if I can remove any more of this hair. It's, well, you know, it's not done that bad. It takes a lot of work. There is still some hair here, just at the top of the screen. But not a lot has stayed on the nozzle. By moving it back and forth, it has managed to suck most of it into the air path. But it's hard work. It's pretty hard going. And if you've got lots of pets to clean up after, you're going to need a rest after using this Goblin Cleaner. Saying that, it has picked up a fair bit of the pet hair into the bin. But it's a fair result but it's an expected result for this type of cleaner and at this price point. For the second carpet cleaning demonstration I've thrown a various amounts of dirt onto the carpet. This is basically all the sort of dirt I pick up during my demos. It gets recycled over and over again so there is an awful lot to deal with in this mess. There's a lot of dust, there's more pet tear, there's carpet fibres, bits of paper, rice, couscous, flour, you name it, it's on the carpet in front of me. So again, as with the pet tear test, I'm going to pass the nozzle forward and back through the middle of this and we'll judge how well the cleaner performs. <laughs> Well, you can definitely see a difference there. Again, it's very hard to push. In fact, it's a little bit too powerful. The nozzle certainly does grip the carpet and I can see it lifting the carpet up as I'm trying to move it back and forth. It's not a bad result. It looks very good on camera. Not quite as good when you look close up. I can definitely see quite a lot of debris still left on the carpet. But for two passes, considering all the dirt, it's not bad for a machine that only cost me £25. Anyway, before I do the next demonstration, which will be on my stairs, I'm just going to clean the rest of this mess up.
in all, I'm pretty impressed with this little goblin. It did pick up everything I put down on the carpet, but it did take quite a lot of effort to do so. And one of my major concerns, and this was mentioned in a few of the reviews, it's these extension tubes. They do tend to flex rather a lot when you're using the machine because it's so powerful. You're having to push quite hard and it's putting strain on these tubes, especially where they're joined. And I think in time they might break. If this had metal extension tubes, it would improve this machine no end. Okay, so carpet performance, it's pretty good. Let's just have a look at the bin. I haven't emptied it yet. That's fairly full. I think it will need emptying soon. Well, there's the Maxfield line there. It takes a three litre capacity. I'm going to leave the dirt in here when I take this machine down to test it on my hard floors. I've put the Goblin on the bottom of the stairs with it partly upright on its end like this to give me a little bit of extra reach. With the machine positioned in this way, you can clean six stairs without having to carry the machine. But once you've cleaned those six stairs, you are going to have to carry the machine with you. But because it's so light and has quite a large, comfortable handle, it's not too difficult. Another downside of a budget-priced cleaner, we don't really get a small upholstery slash stair nozzle. We just get the little crevice tool that I showed you earlier. So you can use that on your stairs. You can certainly use it for doing at the sides of the stairs to prevent that black line that can form around the edges of carpets if you don't clean up to the edge enough. You can use that, but it's going to be very time consuming. So with the absence of a smaller nozzle, I suggest you attach the main carpet and floor nozzle directly onto the handle and then you can clean your stairs that way. So with the main carpet and floor nozzle attached to the end of the handle, I can now clean my stairs. I'm carrying it in one hand and I can direct the nozzle with the other. It's very light, so for me, it's quite easy. for the hard floor demonstration. According to the EU label on the box, this gets an A rating for hard floors, so it should, in theory, do very well. I've put down several different sized particles in front of me. I've put some flour down, two types of flour, some sugar, some rolled oats, and some bran flakes. Now, fine particles like flour do tend to block pleated filters on these cheap bagless cleaners, even some more expensive cyclonic cleaners don't cope very well with very fine dust, so the flower represents that. So I'm going to pass the nozzle front and back, as I did upstairs with the carpet, and we'll see how well it does on the hard floor. this time and time again, it's done very well on the flour, on the fine dust. In fact the A rating is for dust pickup on a hard floor. It includes a crevice which means a gap in between the floor, like the same you're getting the floorboards. So it should do well for picking up dust in between your floorboards. The larger particles, it's done what a lot of cleaners do that have a front brush, it's snow ploughed. So just out of camera shot, just here, we've got the result of all the larger particles being snow ploughed in front of the nozzle. By moving my camera slightly down, you can see what I mean. It's just pushed most of the larger debris in front of the nozzle and not picked it up. It's a very common occurrence. If you check back at my other demo videos, you'll see that most cylinder vacuum cleaners have this snow ploughing effect. Easily solved, you just have to tilt the nozzle slightly backwards when you're going over this dirt and it should remove it. So let's do that now.
just about completes my review and demonstration of this bagless Goblin vacuum cleaner. And as you can see, if I take the bin off, it's pretty full. That will certainly need emptying before I use this cleaner again. Now, what do I think of this cheap, cheap and cheerful bagless vacuum cleaner from Goblin? All in all, it's quite good. If you can pick it up at the rollback price of £25, I would say it's very, very good value for money. At £45, it's less good. I think if it came with a metal telescopic extension tube, that would improve this machine no end. In fact, there is a Goblin version above this in black and lime green colour that does have a metal tube. So if you want to spend a bit more, you might be better off looking at that. But for a cheap and cheerful vac, it's pretty good. So if you've got mainly hard floors, don't have any pets, I would recommend it for a cheap machine. Also, if you've got an older vacuum cleaner, say the motor's gone, and you've still got the cleaning tools for it, if they're a 32 millimeter diameter, which is very common on vacuum cleaners, such as the Henry, many vacuum cleaners use a 32, in, uh, not inch, 32 millimeter diameter. You can use your old cleaning tools on that. So if you've got an old telescopic metal tube, use it with this and you'll find it improves matters no end. Plus any of your other small nozzles should fit onto the end of this cleaner as well. If you have any questions about this machine, please ask in the space below. And don't forget to please subscribe because you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.